The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Won't you join me once again for an adventure in mystery and suspense where space is as boundless and as unlimited as your imagination and time is measured by the beat of your heart. Most of us know who we are, but how many of us know why we are? Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. Is each man's lot ordained from the beginning and fated to be or not to be? Or is it all a random throw of the dice? A casual flip of a coin. Do we tamper with fate at our peril? Who? Who is it? Police. How, how do I know? We've got a chain lock, lady. Just open the door a couple inches. You can see my badge. Oh. Oh, my goodness. What a relief. Please, come in. I... I saw this man. He was prowling around in the dark, outside in the back. I was so frightened. Can you describe him? Well, he, he was tall. How tall? Tall, about like you are. What else? And, and he had broad shoulders, like you have. Why are you looking at me like that? Please, don't look at me like... No! No, don't come any closer. Why would you want to hurt me? No! No! Please! Our mystery drama, Three Times Dead was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars William Redfield. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. And now another story of the ball and chain as Kellogg's Special K presents Veronica and Jeff. Jeffrey, isn't this romantic? Out in a quiet lake at night with you rowing the boat. Yes, Veronica, it's really neat. Jeffrey, what was that? Uh, frogs. Frogs that go bong? Uh, they're pretty weird frogs. Oh, Jeffrey, you're such a card. You have a ball and chain, like the ones they use in those special K commercials. Yes, Veronica, it symbolizes my few pounds of extra weight. But I'm going to get rid of it. How? Uh, by exercising. You know, like rowing this boat and eating smart at every meal, starting with a special K breakfast. You mean a one-ounce bowl of high-protein Special K, four ounces of skim milk, orange juice, and coffee? Uh, precisely. It's less than 240 calories, and it tastes delicious. It'll help me get rid of this ball and chain. I'll help, too, Jeff. After all, we're all in the same boat. <gasps> you have a ball and chain, too. <laughs> Your happy ending could begin with a Special K breakfast from Kellogg's. Consider Napoleon. Historians agree that his doom at Waterloo had been ordained some three years before in his costly victory at Borodino, a tiny village on the road to Moscow. They say that at Borodino, he lost the flower of his army. And why did he lose so many of his best soldiers? Because he was unable to think clearly. The reason? He was suffering from a severe cold. Why? Well... We know that his orderly had gotten drunk the day before and thus neglected to have a pair of dry boots ready for the great general. And so, in a very real sense, this unnamed, unknown, obscure military servant changed the course of history. Those are the facts. We may ask, why was the orderly drunk? Did it just happen? Or was it all part of a plan? Is every single action on the part of every living thing prescribed, ordained, decreed? We don't know. We're just asking. As will some of the people 
you're about to meet. All Area 4 units proceed to 160 South Bend. Reported holdup in progress. Repeat. Repeat. All cars to 160 South Bend. It's an antique shop. Suspected holdup in progress. What I tell you, I have nothing. <laughs> Easy. If you hit him any harder, you'll kill him. Uh, uh, listen, Grandpa, be smart, huh? Take my money. He's in the drawer. Take my money. We don't want your money, Grandpa. All we want is that little statue. Now, you got it here somewhere. Get it. Please don't. <laughs> now, you, you hand it over, Grandpa. You hand it over. Hold it right there. Drop those guns. Sure, officer. Sure thing. You, you okay, sir? I, I think so. These two men... I know, I know. Take it easy. Greenway, what happened? I, I guess they're dead. Hey, Red, get on the radio and get us an ambulance, uh, huh? Sergeant, they, they both had guns. One was pistol-whipping this old man. Sir, uh, we'd better get you to a doctor. I, I'm sorry to have caused you so much trouble. They started to shoot as soon as they saw me. I, I, I guess I was luckier than both of them. Yeah, you did a good job. I, uh... Hey, Greenway, what is it? I've been a cop for eight years. You know, it's the first time I ever had to draw the gun out of the holster. Can you drive? Drive? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, I don't think so. I'll get somebody to take your car. You come back with me. Uh, write up your report. Now? Sure, right now, while it's fresh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's me. I heard about it. It was on the radio. Yeah, it's going to be on the TV news, too. Before we could even get out of the place, everybody was there. Microphones, cameras. Uh... Oh. Two men are dead and... And... Uh... And what? Well, nobody seems to realize that... Donna, everybody knows they're dead. Look, honey, I can't explain it. These two men, they're dead. Their lives are finished, see? I ended the world for them. They don't exist anymore. That, that's what being dead is. Don, you had no choice. I know. It's part of your job. I know. I guess I never looked at that part of the job. I always had the idea I was a cop because I wanted to help people. You helped that poor old man today. You saved his life. I understand, honey. I know all the arguments. Then what is it? I just never thought I'd have to go for the gun. Don. I, I feel as if, as if something, some part of me is gone. What? I don't know. When I saw those two men dead on the floor, I felt that some part of me simply disappeared. Something, something in my mind. Something like, what? I don't know, but it's, it, it's something that I felt was very special and important to me, and now it's just... It's gone. It's, it's disappeared. What you did was absolutely necessary. I agree. But it doesn't change the basic fact, which is I killed. Listen, how about dinner? I didn't know how you'd feel, so it's wide open. Okay, let's go out. Sure. Dress up. I'll take you to Ferretti's. Oh, we're going to make this an occasion. Well, it is an occasion, I guess. Maybe it marks my coming of age. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, Sergeant. Your wife wants you to call her on your coffee break. Something wrong, Sarge? Why don't you take your break right now? He said he wants to entertain both of us this evening at his home. Are you sure? He said his name was Mr. Sanchez, the one whose life you saved. Well, I thought it was something important. It is important. Well, that is, he made it seem like a matter of life and death. Look, I already promised him we'd be there. May I 
offered you some more wine? <laughs> it's delicious. Uh, my dear friend, I am so sorry I could not thank you earlier. Look, it's not necessary to thank me. I did my job, nothing more. Uh, unfortunately, I have been in the hospital for the past week, so I have been unable to show my appreciation. And, and tomorrow my business takes me abroad for an indefinite period, and so it must be tonight or never. Well, what do you mean? Consider this tiny statue. Oh, it's beautiful. Hardly six inches tall and is pure gold. It's exquisitely made. See? The figure of a woman entwined around her a serpent. Now, why do I show you this? Because this is the object those two thugs were after. Oh. But, but, but why? I mean, what did they know about it? Probably nothing. Perhaps someone had paid them to get it. Who? It could be anyone. That is, anyone who might be aware of the legend that surrounds this statue. A legend? Oh, Don. It is said that whoever owns this statue will be granted three wishes. Well... Oh, no. Oh, don't mind him, Mr. Sanchez. He's always skeptical about everything. Now, do you know what year this is, Mr. Sanchez? All that went out with the Arabian Nights. Son, can't we have a little romance? You, you say that the statue will grant you three wishes. So why didn't you use it to save yourself when those hoods were beating up? I did. What do you mean you did? I wish to be saved. And... And you arrived. Mr. Sanchez, I arrived because I got a call on the police radio. But you arrived. And it was their two guns against your one. And they fired first. Yet you killed them both. How? What are you getting at, Mr. Sanchez? Everything or nothing. Uh, now... I wish to make you a gift. Oh, no. No, no, no. I couldn't. Of this statue. Don! No, please. That's out of the question. Besides, why would you want to give it away since you seem to be convinced that it works? Because when I asked to be saved, that was my third wish. Mr. Sanchez, I appreciate what you want to do, but it's illegal for me to accept payment for performance in the line of duty. This is not payment. It is a token. A gift. Look, I am leaving the country for an indefinite period. I am an old man. I cannot make any long-range plans. I may never see you again. There is no way to slice this to make it come out differently, Mr. Sanchez. Are you saying that there is no way I can show you my appreciation? No way beyond a thank you, and I've already received that. Uh, Ella, look, it's getting late. But, Don, Mr. Sanchez is very sincere. I, I know he is. It's still getting late. Before you go, consider. In the ordinary way, I should be dead. That was the obvious way. Fate was working. However, by means of this statue, I changed it. In doing so, I also changed your life. You are a different man because of me. I'm the same man I always was. You don't realize it yet. So, take this statue. Look, I'm very sorry, sir, but I... You may need it. You may even now be headed for a fate... That you may wish to change. Mr. Sanchez, thank you for an excellent dinner and a very pleasant evening. Ella, tomorrow's an early day for me. Then there is nothing I can say to you? I'm afraid not. Wow, honey, this is a spread. <laughs> I thought you'd be hungry tonight. Look at that steak. It... Oh, you even baked a pie. Yes, I did. Look, I'm going to have to start losing weight soon. Don, <laughs> I have to tell you something. Sure, what? Well, at first I thought maybe I could keep it a secret, but... <laughs> hey, what is it? <laughs> Look up there. On the shelf. On the... Sh the statue. Before you say another word, it's mine. Yours? Listen, Don... He stopped off here this afternoon on the way to the airport. He asked me to accept the statue. 
Couldn't you tell him that I can't... I told him. I even told him I couldn't accept it as a gift either. Well, so how does it happen that it's sitting... Well, he said, let me sell it to you. Sell it? Let me sell it to you, he said, for $50. $50? It's worth at least $1,000. Don, he convinced me we might need this statue one day. Honey, for what? Who knows? Anyhow... It's my statue. I have the bill of sale made out to me. Here it is. Now, (laughs) what would you like me to wish for? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. And, Ella, I want your word of honor that you will never, never use that statue to wish for anything. But, Don... I want your promise. But you can't be serious. Look, I'll tell you how serious I am. If you ever make a wish on that statue, I will break up our marriage... Now, can I have your promise? Why is Don so upset? Is it such a bad thing to have a wish come true? Well, it is, according to both Aesop and James Russell Lowell, because both of them said, granting our wish is one of fate's saddest jokes. Even so, and with all due respect to those two great men, wouldn't most people jump at the chance to get a wish gratified? The proposition will be tested when I return in a few moments with Act Two. Now back to CBS Mystery Theater. It's a tiny statue, perhaps six inches high made of the purest gold and the finest workmanship. It's the figure of a beautiful woman with a serpent coiled about her waist. It is said to have the power to grant its owner three wishes. And would you believe that it's the source of a violent argument between Don and Ella Greenway in this day and age of electronics and jets? Don, wouldn't it be something, though? Wouldn't what be something? If it were all really true... If we could get three wishes out of it. Now, Ella, I meant what I said before. No wishing on that statue. Don. Do you mean you believe the old man? Well, do you? What's the difference? But, Don, how could... Ella, remember what he said last night about how I happened to be there? Yes, but... When I pulled up in the squad car and jumped out, I couldn't see inside that shop. Do you know what I mean? No. There's a window display. It blocks your view. The door was closed. And it's a heavy wooden door. What are you trying to tell me? Listen. The call came in, you see? It was relayed to Sergeant Carter. The assumption was some passerby had seen the holdup. Well, that has to be what happened. How? How could anyone on the street have seen anything inside the shop? Maybe someone passing by heard the old man scream. No, 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 no. See, I was there at the height of it. I didn't hear a thing. I didn't see a thing. Until I threw that door open. Well, but... Well, but what? I got there first because mine was the nearest car to the scene. Each of them got off a shot at me before I could even fire. Don. Please, I I don't even like to think about it. Ella, I didn't even want to shoot. Would you believe it? I had to force myself to pull the trigger. Still, when the smoke clears, there they are. They're dead. I'm alive. Could there have been... Oh, fate, or whatever you call it, involved there? Uh, On the other hand, it could just be the way things happen sometimes. That's right, that's right. So, let's let things determine themselves, right? For better or for worse. How would it be if I wished you made sergeant? (laughs) I'm going to make sergeant anyhow. Hmm, That's true. How about money? No, Ella, I want you to listen. Forget that statue. I won't wish for a million dollars. Look, Ella, I'm telling you. All this is extremely practical and justified. Look, we owe 12000 on the mortgage. Ella. 1500 on the car. I don't want to go into all this again. And that's thirteen five. We owe 400 for the new roof. And you'll have to have that dental work done. That's another 600 And we've been promising ourselves an air conditioner for the bedroom. Honey. And our washing machine is 10 years old. Comes to, say, $15,000. I don't want to hear any more, Ella. Don, it's my statue. Please, Ella, I... What is it, Don? All right. All right, I'll admit it. I... 
I'm scared. Of what? I don't know. Ever since that shootout, I've had all kinds of crazy ideas. Crazy ideas? Well, not crazy so much as, as mixed up. And I I don't even know if they're ideas. They're more like, like feelings. Can you... No, no, I can't describe them. Honey, just please, listen, don't do anything right now to upset me, okay? You need a vacation. I'm all right, I'm all right. Let's just let everything sit for a while. Hey, what time did it get to be? I have to sign in at five. Goodbye, honey. Bye, darling. Ella, just humor me, will you? I mean, promise. I promise. <laughs> I promised. And I probably would have kept that promise. But I was loaded in the dishwasher. I turned the knob, and nothing happened. I kept clicking the knob, and nothing happened. I was so angry, so frustrated, I finally kicked it. And nothing happened. we wanted was to live nicely, comfortably. It would take $15,000 to put us ahead of the game. Would that upset fate? I looked at the statue. I remembered the words that Mr. Sanchez had spoken when he left here. You look at the statue. You say to the statue, I wish for, I wish for... I wish for... I wish for... Fifteen thousand dollars. Thirty-nine Phillips, go to forty-five Stuyvesant. Lady complaining about a streaker. Eighty-six Heatherton, some drunk is annoying people. Cancel! Area four, stand by. Checked in 86, 39, 14, 21. 21. I'm at Collins and Walker. It's a holdup. Merchants Federal, North Main. Perpetrators escaping in Blue Station Wagon, headed toward Interstate Highway. At 21. 21. Head south to Washington and cut them off. All cars toward Washington and Interstate Highway. 21. 21. You turn east on Washington. Blue Wagon headed toward Collins Intersection. Uh, 21, if alleyways open past Jefferson, I can shortcut through there. 21, I'm in the alley, coming out on Washington. 21, they just went by me. 21, they turned left into Turnbull, I'm following. All units, west on Turnbull. West on Turnbull. 21, he, he's, trying to, he's trying to swing around. He's, he's crazy. He's crazy. Mrs. Greenway. Sergeant Carter. Where, where is he? Oh, they, uh, they just brought him down from the operating room. Just tell me. Don't try to break it slowly. I have to know. Well, as of right now, he's still alive. Oh, thank God. We had him trapped. They tried to turn around and get by him. It was a head-on crash. I want to see him. Sure. Come inside with me. Come in. I'm Dr. Morris. Doctor. He's still unconscious. What will he... We're doing everything we can. He's surrounded with intensive care. But... But will he... Mrs. Greenway, there are different methods of handling a thing like this. I could build up your hopes over a... Or... You can tell me the truth. I can tell you what appears to be the truth. To us. At uh, this time. Oh, it's not going to make it. The outlook is not good. Why is the outlook not good? There's been an unbelievable shock to his system. Yes. There's been some, not very much, but a little brain damage. Nurse, 
Maintain the indicated levels on fluids and oxygen and report even the slightest changes immediately. May I stay here for a while? I, I, I promise not to get in anybody's way. Of course. Excuse me. Mrs. Greenway, if there's anything any of us can do... We'll... Thank you, Sergeant. <sighs> it's guys like him. Yeah, what's the use? It's usually guys like him who get it. You know, it's funny. He might have had a premonition about it. What are you saying, Sergeant? Oh, I... I don't know. I, I was just thinking aloud. No. Now, tell me. Tell me what you mean by a premonition. Well, it's uh, just how things work out, you know. A couple of months ago, we got this new Benevolent League special insurance. And Don never paid any attention to it. But this morning, before going on duty, he said to me, Hey, Sarge, hand me a form. I'll sign up. <gasps> he signed up for special insurance this morning? Yeah. How much insurance? How much? Well, let's see if I can remember. Oh, oh sure. It, uh, well, it was the same as mine. $15,000. No! This morning, Ella Greenway stood before a tiny gold statue and wished for $15,000. Taken by itself, we could call it an act of superstition. Now, 14 hours later, her husband is dying. And we find he has just insured his life for, hmm, you guessed it, $15,000. Rarely is superstition so scientifically supported by mathematics. We'll have another set of numbers when I return shortly with Act Three. WBBM, Chicago, News Radio 78. If you could have three wishes, would you take them? Ella Greenway was warned. Stay with what fate has planned. Accept destiny. Don't improvise. But all she wished for was a modest sum of money to keep up with the cost of living. However, it turns out the price she must pay for the money is her husband's life. One wish down. Two to go. I... I don't want the money... I don't want that. Mrs. Greenway. Uh, huh? Mrs. Greenway. What? Oh. Oh, where am I? Are you all right? Are you all right now? Oh, I had a dream. I dreamed I was called to the hospital because Don had been killed. And no. Uh, no, it, it wasn't. It isn't a dream. Don is dying, and I'm here in the hospital. <laughs> Doctor. You fainted, and I can understand why. It's been a terrible shock. <laughs> Dr. Morris? Oh? Very well, I'll be right up there. Doctor, that was, that was about Don, wasn't it? Yes. I can tell by the tone in your voice. It's not good. I never told you it was good, Mrs. Greenway. But now it's worse. He's getting worse. He's sinking quickly. It could be a matter of minutes. Well, I... Please, tell me. Yes. He could die at any time. Sergeant Carter, take me home. But don't you want to Take know... me home. Take me home as quickly as you can. Take me home! I wish for Don to live. I wish for Don to live. Mrs. Greenway? Oh, Mrs. Greenway. Oh. oh. Yes. I, yes. Uh, I just had to make sure you were okay. Oh. I'm all right. <laughs> you had me worried the way you were. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm fine. And about Don, well, maybe... Uh, maybe the doctors don't know everything, you know? Maybe, uh... Maybe there will be something to... Don... It, Don will be all right. Just remember, if there's anything, anything at all... If you... Well, Mrs. Greenway, uh, aren't you going to answer it? Answer? 
The phone. <laughs> okay, don't don't bother. I will. Hello. Is that you, Sergeant? Yeah. Could you bring Mrs. Greenway back here right away? <laughs> We never saw or even heard of such a remarkable turnabout. You could almost say it's a miracle. Why not say it? Uh, There's one thing for sure, Mrs. Greenway never gave up hope, never lost faith. (laughs) Uh, Look at that man. He's got his color back. Respiration, pressure, heartbeat, everything. Everything is perfectly normal. I still can't believe it. Don. Don. Ella. Ella, is it you? It's Ella. Where... Where are you? I'm here, Don. You're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Hi, honey. Don! Tell me. How was it? Well, I'd been away for a while, you know. I was kind of nervous that first day back. But how did it go? Oh, it, uh, it just went. Hmm. I was worried about your going back so soon. Oh, it's been more than a month, honey. Besides, the doc wouldn't have held still for it unless I checked out 100%. Don, did you tell the doctors about the... The, uh, the headaches? Well, uh... Did you? Honey, everybody gets headaches, and these just come and go. But yours can get very severe. If they don't stop, I'll talk about it next time I see it. Listen, what would you like to do tonight? How about a movie? Sure. Don, what's that on your blouse? Uh, what, where? All over your sleeve. Was it blood? Blood? What? How would blood get on my sleeve? Well, it looks like blood. I can't imagine. Maybe, well, maybe it's paint or some kind of stain or something. You know, I might have brushed up against something. I better send it to the cleaners first thing. How could it have... If you haven't started on dinner yet, let's eat out, huh? All right. Hey, you know what you forgot to do when I walked in just before? What? You forgot to give your old man a kiss. Oh, Don. Yeah, that's better. You've got to shape up around here. Can't let you get into bad habits. Don, you still have a headache? Headache? No, it's gone. Completely gone. Maybe it'll never come back. All right. We got some new little goodies for you boys in blue out there. Alert for stolen gold arrow convertible. License plate 1232N, as in nobody. Brand new Toro sedan, shell pink, yes indeedy. Plate number 5498. 21 calling in, 21 calling in. Yes, 21. Sarge, I I think I should come in. Something wrong, Don? Oh, I think I'm starting to get a headache. Where are you? Uh, 3100 block on North Sheridan. Well, well, this is on your way. Just check it out. A woman, apartment 3A, 560 Cheyenne. That's two blocks west of you. Two blocks. Woman reports prowler in the vicinity. She must be a nut. She calls on an average of three times a week. But take down her story. It makes her feel better. Then come in. Okay, okay. time getting here, I could have been murdered. Yes, ma'am. Yes, now, just Miss, tell me. You ride around in your cars and you think you do a day's work. Please, madam, just I tell me. I pay my rent. I pay my taxes. Just tell me what... Oh, my head. Will you just tell me what you saw? Don't you yell at me. You're a public servant. My servant. <sighs> Why are you looking at me like that? Me. No! No! Don't! Don't! Please! No! Please! No! 
my head. What a relief. I never want to have another one of... Wait a minute, wait a minute. What am I supposed to be doing? Yeah, I go to apartment 3A. 560 oh, Cheyenne woman saw a prowler. I'm here. What the... Lady. Lady, are you... Twenty-one calling in. Twenty-one calling in. You heading in, John? No, you better be headed out. The prowler was there, all right. She's dead. What is it, Doc? Won't know till the autopsy. He hit her a few heavy blows, and that was enough to kill her. She was lying there. I could see she was dead or close to it, so then I called in. Uh, then what did you do? Uh, I had a look around the back. Anything? Nothing. From uh, what I can see here, she tried to put up a little bit of a fight anyhow. See? Yeah. Slight trace of blood under this fingernail. Oh, yeah. She might have scratched him. Well, Don, write it up. <sighs> okay. And then you can go home. Home? Yeah. Didn't you ask to come in because you had a headache? Oh, yeah, but I don't have one now. I, I feel great. <laughs> Oh, sweetie, I'm sorry I was so late for dinner. I heard about the murder on the news. Yeah, I know. Oh, she wasn't a pretty sight to see. Why? Why was she killed? We don't know. Well, did you get a chance to see anything? No, I got the call to go to the address because she'd complained about a prowler. The next thing I knew, I was in the apartment. She was dead on the floor. Don, what do you mean? The next thing you knew? Well, the next... Well, because that's the next thing that happened. You know, that's how you write your report. You go from one fact to the next. Listen, honey, let, let's not talk about it, please. I never wanted to be a guy who brings his job home. Don, what did you do to your face? Huh? Where? Well, it looks like a scratch. Just below your right ear. I don't know. Well, how did you... You sure there's a scratch there? Well, it looks like one. Well, I might have gotten it from shaving this morning. But you don't shave there. <laughs> All right, look, it doesn't bother me. But how do you... And if we worry about every tiny little scratch... Honey, what are you looking so serious for? I can't even feel it. All right, if it makes you feel better, I'll put some antiseptic on it. I... Ella? Ella, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. I'm just tired. I feel so... worn out. block on Cheyenne. Five, five, four. Five, five, six. Five, five, eight. Five, sixty. Outside entrance. Inside door, and it's... It's locked. Locked. Why, uh, hello, Ella. Sergeant Carter. Oh, what are you doing in this neighborhood? Oh, uh, just shopping. Uh, there's some very fine shops. Uh, Ella. Yes, Sergeant? Tell me, since Don's been home from the hospital, has he... Well, have you noticed anything unusual about him? Unusual? Mm. In, in what way? Oh, I don't know. Uh, he has complained of headaches. Headaches? Uh. You know, he may have come back to duty just a little bit too soon. Although I must say, it hasn't interfered with his performance of duty. He's a great cop. Well, uh, see you around. Ella, hey, where have you been? I've been home for about two hours. Oh, I was out. It's okay, it's okay. I made supper, chili. What do you think? Pull up a chair and enjoy a treat. Huh? Don... How do you feel? Uh, right now? I feel fantastic. I've never been in better shape in all my life. I look at you and... I don't know how to begin. Begin what? Don, the cleaner said you had blood on your sleeve. That was the other day. And 
the other day, there was a knifing. Some old tramp had been... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, what are you saying? And yesterday, you went to the scene of another killing. You had a scratch, as if someone... Ella, is this your idea of a joke? Hear it all first. You went to this lady's apartment. Now, if she was already dead when you got there, how did you get in there? The door to the hallway is locked. You have to ring the bell. Donald, how did you get in there? How did I get in there? What? How do you think I got in there? I rang the bell. No. Listen. No. What are you making it so complicated for? I rang the bell. She sounded the buzzer. She let me in. She let you in? Well, who else would have let me in? She lives all alone, doesn't she? But, Tom! Oh, Tom! Look, I got this headache again. Tom, listen to me. I... I have to lie down. Something's terribly wrong. When I... When I get this headache, I... I can go crazy. It really wasn't murder. You didn't know. I knew. I knew. When I feel this way, I can kill. Carter. Sergeant Carter. He was there again today for the same reason I was. He suspects. Will you shut up? You need help. Don, oh, darling, darling, don't. Don't, please. Don't look at me that way. Don. Don't look at me that way. No. It isn't even human. Keep away. God, it's me. Don't, don't. I wish. I wish. so much. I just want to sleep. Never wake up. I just want to sleep. Don. <laughs> oh, Don. Times Dead. And you can have the story any way you like. The supernatural powers of the little golden statue, or the sudden rallies and collapses that still defy the best thinking of medical science. Random accident or predestined fate. We always have something for everybody. As usual, I'll have something for you when I return shortly. I wish I could tell you what happened to the little statue, but I can't. Ella Greenway's house was robbed a few years ago, and the little statue was part of the loot. It may have been stolen by someone who knew its powers. On the other hand, it may be kicking around some antique or gift shop. Remember, if you see it, it's a beautiful lady with a snake twined about her waist. And if you should see it, would you buy it? Hmm? Our cast included William Redfield, Suzanne Grossman, Sam Gray, and Dan Ocko. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg Special K cereal, new sugar-free diet 7-Up, and Sign Off, the sinus medicines. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.
CBS News in one minute.